Hey guys, welcome to my Astro tutorial on patterns. Um, oh, I got a little scenario right here, a little configuration up and ready to examine. Uh, basically, I have a bunch of SIP clients uh, defined on the left hand side of the screen in the SIP configuration file uh, 1000 through 1011, a total of 12 different SIP clients. So we've got them defined here and you'll find that this is unavoidable even if you have thousands of SIP clients you'll have to define each and every one of them in this fashion so and I mean I'm sure there's a way in Excel to quickly produce such a file but I'm not going to get into that so this is unavoidable however on the right hand side you'll see I've kind of done the same thing where I've defined each possible number that the user will have to dial in order to reach any one of these guys and this is unnecessary to say um, that, that's the best way of putting it this is unnecessary basically all of this can be reduced to one line instead of defining each possible way of dialing a user I mean imagine a real-world implementation using this method defining each possible phone number a user can dial it's a bit ridiculous so no it's actually better to use what we call pattern which will kind of dynamically figure out uh, how to dial the other user so let's uh, close uh, our SIP configuration for now and um, I actually have to introduce you to a new concept that actually has nothing to do with patterns but will help us figure out patterns um, and it's something important to know which is a variable that's implemented with functions so patterns are implemented here on the left side identifying what the user is dialed and um, this variable is used only in functions here on the right hand side helping uh, whatever action is being taken and basically this variable um, identifies what the user has dialed whatever the user has dialed that variable will become that so if the user dialed 1011, it becomes 1011. So the way we identify variables on this right hand side here is with dollar sign and open close brackets. So that identifies it's a variable and we can put in the name of the variable, which in this case is extend. It stands for extension. It's whatever the extension was dialed. 1011 and this would become 1011. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So essentially if I start replacing all of these numbers here, as you see me doing, there's no difference between what we had before and what we have now. When the user dials 1004, it will call SIP user 1004. This will become 1004 because that's the number that the user dialed so it's not an incredibly hard concept but I hope you understand so that is a, a built-in variable for the extensions configuration file. let's go ahead and move on to actual patterns now so we have exactly what we have before in a sense um, each of these represent the numbers that could be dialed on the left hand side but uh, do we need to still define each number? No, we want to get rid of these. We want to uh, delete all these lines, essentially. We want to surmise all of this in one line. So let me bring back um, SIP configuration over here. So right now, what we have is the only user that can be dialed is 1,000 let's create a pattern now and the way we identify that we have a pattern is we use the underscore key and this key represents that this part now is a pattern it's not just one extension that's being identified well unfortunately in this case uh, this is this is a pattern that only equals one type of extension being dialed which uh, when you put in literal numbers like this one zero 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 Whatever number that's dialed, it has to match the pattern 1000 in order for it to do this action. And that's what this is saying. Um, you, I think you'll understand it more if we put in a random variable here. 
so we use X and th these variables are specific they have to be specific letters you can't use Q and X represents any number 0 through 9 so to get an idea of how that would work here um, well, let's, what did I do? Sorry, I had to switch focus. So, 1000, 100, zero, zero, and any, the last digit can be 0 through 9. 1000 would work here because the last digit is 0, and this represents any digit 0 through 9. This works. 1000 works, 1001, 1002, 1003 works, 1004, 1007, 1008, 1000. All these characters work well except for the last two. Why? Because the second to last character has a 1 in it, in both these cases. And the pattern demands that the second to last character be a 0. I hope you understand the idea behind patterns now. And we have other variables that we can use here. We can use, for example, a Z. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Ugh. Stupid pimp being unfriendly right now but okay this is now Z and Z represents any character 1 through 9 as I recall yes so actually what we've done in this case is we've cut out one of our guys on the left here another one 1000 would not be able to be called why because the last character is 0 doesn't work um, Let's see what uh, we have uh, N. It actually cuts out another one of our guys, and th these are all the variables we can use there. Um, N demands the last digit in this case be a number two through nine. So one thousand would not be able to be called. One thousand one would not be able to be called. Why? Because one doesn't fall within the range of two through nine. It's not within the, the domain. So. Four total guys will be cut out with this pattern, and you can see uh, how I could just pretty much, if I wanted to, this would get the job done of allowing our people to call. I mean, we could also, uh, sorry, I used the numpad key. I keep forgetting I can't use that in BIM. 10XX. So, this would accept all of our SIP users here. Um, you could dial one zero and maybe even two uh, would be acceptable but this is this is defining um, basically the last two digits doesn't matter what's dialed as long as it starts with one zero. Um, and th there's more to patterns that I want to get in this video before uh, I run out of time. So the open and close brackets here this actually identifies one single character and what goes inside the brackets to find what those characters can be so let's say 1 through 8 actually let's say 0 through 8 0 through 8 alright so with this pattern now all our users can be dialed except 1009 because he's not and the last, the last character can only be one of these guys, 0 through 8, and 9's not a part of that group of 0 through 8. So he's cut out. So that's what the brackets do, essentially. Uh, a way to shorten this statement is we can put a dash there. Uh, that'll be uh, 0 through 8 like that, and that would work. Uh, I can also put... Um, that again. I could also 0, 1, 2, and let's say 4. And now we're skipping out number 3 and number 9 from being used. I cut out two of these users. I hope you understand the theory behind uh, patterns. That's basically all there is to it. Um, there is one more, uh, which is a complete wild card. Each of these um, that we've been using so far, the X, the Z, the N, and even the open close brackets can only be one single character. The dot, however, can be many characters. 
so anything that ends the, the it could be one zero nine 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 seven eight six whatever that would match this pattern here so I think I'm out of time yes I'm just over but I hope you understand that uh, last concept with the dot uh, it's kind of like a wild card it would accept 1023 1045 uh, 10997899999999 it would accept that because this represents an unlimited amount of characters which could be anything uh, 0 through 9 or I think uh, in some DTMF codes uh, ABCD would also be accepted uh, you could even make this a catch-all and uh, well this is actually a bad thing to do but you can do this and this would work so alright let me end the video here thank you